Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Thursday, August 17th. Palm Coast City Council approves two critical transportation projects. Amy Cherry has details. Carl Cody, director of the city stormwater and engineering department, talks about phase two of the widening of Old Kings Road North. It's really to widen the road from two to four lanes, divided roadway. We modify and add limited turn lanes, provide an eight-foot wide path on both sides of the road, provide continuous street lighting, and then we did replace the existing strain pole with a new mast iron pole in that initial phase. The project was approved in 2020, but now that more than $18 million in funding from FDOT is on the way, it needs some modifications. This project has been underway for many years. It's on the TPO's priority list. In preparation to move towards construction, we need to go in and do some updates to the plans. We have to meet current DOT specifications. Talk of Phase 3, which would widen the remaining portion of Old Kings Road north from Frontier Drive to Forest. Grove Drive is also underway, but state funding still needs to be secured. This week, City Council also approved traffic and safety improvements to Beltaire Parkway from Royal Palms Parkway to White View Parkway. Each intersection will see an added turn lane or an extended right turn lane. At White View and Royal Palms Parkways, you'll see existing left turn lanes extended and enhanced signals at that intersection. Work will also be done to modify sidewalks and drainage. Palm Coast received $4.5 million from the state for this crucial construction project. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. It's time for the Flagler County Sheriff's Office Weekend Roundup. Karen Johnson takes a closer look at last weekend. Beginning last Friday night, a Flagler County Sheriff's deputy responded to a residence on Wood Ash Lane in reference to a man escaping hospital custody, and it was discovered he had an active warrant out of Hillsborough County. Sheriff Rick Staley. A fugitive from Hillsborough County found out he couldn't hide in Flagler County, and he was taken to the Green Roof Inn. And a man carrying four round-shaped multicolored pills with a cartoon character bird imprinted on them was put into handcuffs. Another arrest at the Red Roof Inn on Kingswood Drive in Palm Coast. Deputies arrested a man for possession of MDMA. It's a great job by our deputies over the weekend handling a lot of calls. In all, Flagler County Sheriff's Office deputies made six arrests last weekend, and deputies handled 755 calls for service and made 190 traffic stops. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. Being aware of offenders and predators that are residing in your area or around the school, that's why we publish this information, is for public awareness for our citizens to keep them safe. John Roddenberry of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement tells Liz Ryan ways to know if a sex offender lives near you. If you have a child in your life that you care about, you'll want to take note of this website and bookmark it. Florida Offender Alert. Com. On the home page, you enter your email address and create a password to set up a new account. Then, as John explains, there are two ways to be alerted when a sexual predator moves into your neighborhood. First way is you can go in and set up your home address, or you can set up like a work address or a school address to receive notifications when offenders move into the area. You can customize that to set up alerts whenever an offender moves within anywhere from a quarter mile to a five mile radius of a specific address. I asked about the safety of logging on and creating an account to track convicted offenders. Can you do so anonymously? Oh, absolutely. Currently in Flagler County, there are approximately 143 convicted sex offenders. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. Smart says the community is great at fostering animals with no forever homes. Caroline and Shara, though, also put out the plea for a building for the animals. What we provide in Flagler County. Well, if there's County. a building owner that was listening to the show right yes, now. Yes, please. <laughs> Anyone out there <laughs> that wanted to donate has any a, land. a building mm-hmm. or something. Absolutely. That, that, would that work? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They say that the Humane Society cannot do it all, but if Smart had a building, they would be able to get grants to help house homeless animals. You can listen to the business report on WNZF Saturday mornings at 10 and on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, a fundraiser from the WNZF Newsroom. I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.